high stability important. If you didn't regulate those two quantities, the level of voltage and, and the frequency, you would see uncontrolled power exchanges throughout the power system. You know, your sources and, and loads would see massive power transfers. You'd see uh, unfettered power flow from the transmission to the distribution system. And that can be bad news for a whole lot of neighborhoods and, and businesses because what that can do is damage equipment. It can cause equipment to malfunction. So for the past 100 years or more, since the inception of the power grid, uh, the grid has largely been kept stable by the presence of synchronous machine-based generation. So this is generation that uh, you typically see within thermal power plants, steam turbines, gas turbines. Uh, you know, you could try to hit this with a Mack truck, but the generator will still remain uh, kind of rotating at the same frequency. It'll still try to preserve that frequency of rotation. This is why the power system over the past 100 years has been relatively stable. The frequency has remained within a certain uh, region of, of stable operation. The thing about solar and wind inverters uh, is that they don't inherently have this large inertial mass that keeps the frequency of the system stable. But as we see more and more uh, introduction of renewables into the power grid, we'll have to eventually harness the capability of these inverter-based resources to also regulate voltage and frequency, much in the same way that synchronous machines do today. We have to transition from kind of this fixed legacy infrastructure and control dynamics towards a system that is more flexible, more adaptable, more able to handle a variety of different types of resources and transfers of, of active power between places where you know, that hasn't usually happened. Fast frequency response and grid forming are both uh, new types of control techniques that we can apply to inverter-based resources to help ensure the stability of the power system. The, the idea behind grid forming is to control the inverter-based resources to provide this inherent voltage and frequency regulation that the synchronous machine-based resources, you know, thermal power plants, gas turbines, steam turbines, have been, have been doing for, for quite some time now. Fast frequency response refers to the leveraging of the inverter-based resources to kind of arrest the frequency decline or frequency acceleration in, in the case of a, you know, a temporary load and supply imbalance. Um, that means that the inverter is kind of watching the grid frequency and injecting some stabilizing active power to help prop up the grid frequency within a short time span. Um, grid forming is actually an even faster uh, active power injection technology where instantaneously, if there's any voltage or frequency disturbance in the power system, so not only do the grid forming inverters have to provide power, they have to regulate the voltage and frequency of the grid, but they also have to self-synchronize with each other so that all of the grid forming resources reaches a, a stable equilibrium at the same frequency and a relatively same voltage. Uh, that's very similar to how a, you know, an orchestra works. You have a conductor ensuring that the tempo is the same, you know, and, and everybody's following that tempo within the context of an orchestra. In other words, you know, the frequency up in, in British Columbia has to be the same frequency as you see down in, in New Mexico. In certain pockets of the grid, we are starting to see uh, uh, the need for grid forming to play a role in, in the stability of the power system. For example, smaller island communities where maybe in Hawaii, you have very high levels of renewables and you have to achieve frequency and voltage regulation using your renewable resources. If you start to look at uh, some of the larger uh, uh, larger power grids, for example, ERCOT down in Texas, uh, they're starting to see significant levels of renewables and they're starting to get to the point where grid forming is being discussed more broadly uh, in the context of, of those situations. If you look at, uh, for example, Ireland, uh, Ireland is one example of a power system that has reached you know, instantaneous levels of renewables up to you know, 65, 70 percent. Uh, they're actively discussing, uh, in some of these cases, the application of grid forming technology to help stabilize the grid voltage and frequency and thereby increase the, uh, the level of renewables to even greater amounts. The Department of Energy has been providing uh, support to, to GE Research. Uh, they've been funding a $4.2 million program in the development of advanced grid forming controls uh, for solar inverter technology. Certainly within the next 20 years, uh, there will be a strong need for grid forming in certain areas of the grid where there hasn't been before. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I think in the meantime, we have to develop grid forming technologies and capabilities that can seamlessly uh, synchronize with existing synchronous machine-based generation in the grid today. GE Research and, and, and GE more broadly has, uh, has done a lot of work in grid forming in the past years. Uh, Stretching all the way back to the 1990s, we've been deploying grid forming based technologies, not you know at the same scale that we're talking about these days, uh, but you know 
more one-off installations. We've been demonstrating and proving out this technology for, for decades already. Uh, so, you know, I feel that we are well positioned to make uh, more broad advances in, in, in this technology space.